Welcome to the Advance Your Art podcast, where we talk about the journey from artist to entrepreneur and everything in between. You've worked hard to hone your craft. Now take it to the next level with tips, techniques, strategies, and routines used by successful artists to grow their businesses and careers. Now, let's get started and have some fun with your host, Yuri Cataldo. How are you today? I'm doing really well, Yuri. Thank you so much. Of course, that's wonderful. Thank you so much for being on the show. I really appreciate it. Oh, such a pleasure. <laughs> Looking forward to this. Excellent. I'd like to start off today by asking you how you describe yourself and what you do. Ooh, it's always such a <laughs> funny question for me. Um, so I am an artist. Um, I was a dancer my whole life, um, and I segued, and I've always been a writer, and I segued into acting, so more performance art um, after in, in and after grad school. Um, and I'm also a business developer, and I have a business called Artists in Business, which I um, hold online courses and high-level coaching for artists of all disciplines and helping them create thriving businesses with and for their art. Wow, that's wonderful. And that's that's a lot. You must be a very, very busy person. <laughs> that's funny. I I'm I try really hard not to be busy. Like like I I know and you could probably attest to this as a business owner. It's like the last thing you want to be as a business owner is just busy. Mm -hmm. Um you know, we want to be taking action in very sort of strategic and focused ways. Um but what's funny is, yeah, I've always been very um, multi-passionate. And if I am not um, functioning at a very high level at all times, um, something like a ball is going to drop. That's the irony, I guess, with, you know, my personality. Um, so I've come to learn that about myself because everybody used to tell me, you know, so you're going to need to slow down. My father in particular used to be <laughs> so worried about me in high school. I was like <laughs> involved in everything you could imagine and really kind of excelling in all of it. Mm -hmm. And one day he just sat down with me and he's like, you really need to slow down. And I was like, why? <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, cause you can't do all these things. It's, you know, you're, you're going to burn out. And I was like, really? I mean, like, it, you know, cause I, I was fine. It didn't, it didn't feel like I was on the road to burnout. I was kind of feel, I was feeling really good. And um, so I got scared and I was like, OK, well, maybe I should think about that. And then I started to overthink it and, you know, kind of like tried to step back and relax a little bit. And then all of a sudden it was like, oh, my God, like this is going wrong over here and this is going over here. And I was like, hang on. You know, <laughs> I'm I was good before. Let me just step back up into that sort of, you know, take control <laughs> mm -hmm. sort of role and run with it. Yeah, it's. You have a very interesting mix of what you do now and, and background. I'm curious, did you go to school for business or did you start off by going to school for acting and writing and, and the creative side? Mm. Yep. So I um, I come from a, a – my father is an artist and my mother um, was an English and reading teacher. And I danced my entire life and I was, I was always been – I've always been a writer, as I mentioned. So in college, I um, – in undergrad, I majored in dance um, and film with a minor in creative writing. And then in grad school, I took two years off and went to NYU for grad school and studied cross-cultural dance and theater with a focus on classical Indian dance um, because that was a really practical <laughs> topic. Of course uh, it was. Yes, of choice. Um, but... I grew, growing up, I had an uncle who was like a second father to me. He didn't, he never married and he didn't have kids and we were really close and he was an electrician by trade, but a stock market investor as well. Hmm. And he, from when I was six years old, he was, he had been talking to me about the importance of, um, starting a business and taking control of your finances and talking to me about the stock market. 
And he would do this while we were at Kmart and I was shopping for toys because he would, you know, he would take me shopping. We would go out for lunch together and then we would go to Kmart and I would be like in the toy aisle just in, you know, my zone, just, uh, you know, in like a blissful state. And he would be talking to me about the stock market. And I mean, I was like, I, it was the last thing I wanted to hear. I was trying to tune him out as much as possible. And I did that all through high school. He was talking to me, same story, same message he was giving me all through high school. And I just worked really hard to tune him out as much as possible. And, you know, the interesting thing is that afterwards, when I was in grad school, I stopped and said, Oh, wow. Like, I actually enrolled in a stock market course and I started to learn about the stock market. And then, um, because I saw the struggle of the life of an artist, number one, and I really took to heart what he had been telling me and, um, realized, you know, I wanted to learn more. So T and I started to have some really amazing conversations from that point on. And, um, I became savvy with the stock market and was, you know, writing covered calls, um, and buying options, um, much to his dismay, he didn't like that I was buying options, but <laughs> again, my personality, it's like, if you're going to do it, <laughs> you might as well go all the way. Right. So, um, yep. So I did, so, so that's, uh, that's where it all began, like where, how, how the two merged for me and, you know, kind of where my mind was in terms of business as an artist. Okay. The stock market class that you took, was that through NYU or was that a, a separate course that you took in, in, in New York? It was literally, I got a letter in the mail from one of those free courses. <laughs> and as a marketer, you know, you know exactly what they've done. They, you know, it's a free course and they're going to have an offer at the end. And, mm -hmm. um, and so that's what I signed up for. And. Um, it was amazing. I was completely blown away. It was like, you know, teaching people. And, you know, the funny thing is that that company, the guy, the person who taught it, um, that guy filed for bankruptcy um, a couple of years after I took that course. <laughs> That's but, not a good sign. <laughs> no, it was terrible. But while, while I was taking it, um, I was amazed. I, I was like, I was watching people all around me, um, you know, making a lot of money mm -hmm. in the stock market and using tools and strategies to do so and treating it like a business. And so it was really my first kind of like Im real immersion with a group of business owners because, right. um, you know, I had, I, I just hadn't been around them up until then. So, um, yeah, I was like really intimidated, but then really challenged in a good way okay. by it all. Oh, great. So after grad school and, and you started um, in working in the stock market, what what was your day job or was the stock market trading your day job? No. Yeah. So I didn't work in the stock market. I just like on my own, okay. you know, on my own computer um, would uh, write covered calls. And you can do that as a like a lay person. Um, so I, yeah, that's what I did, but I was a yoga instructor. Um, I had had a back injury as a dancer in undergrad and, um, started to practice Iyengar style yoga, which healed my back. And so when I moved to Chicago for two and a half years, I apprenticed with one of the best teachers in the country there, Gabriel Halpern, and became, um, a teacher at his school, the yoga circle. And, um, so all through grad school at NYU, I was actually teaching yoga um, to support myself. Okay. Excellent. And then in your career, I noticed on your bio that eventually you started this company called Love and Water Designs. What was the backstory with that? So after I, you know, got done with grad school and, um, you know, was um, working on like being a working artist, you know, um, the kind of artist I was in performance art, you know, wasn't like, um, I was auditioning for some film and television. Um, but that really wasn't my, my true passion. My true passion was to create my own work and work with really incredible artists in the process. So I was in fact 
able to do that. I was working with um, Lanny Harrison, who worked with Meredith Monk. Um, I was working a little bit with the Labyrinth Theater Company with Philip Seymour Hoffman and Stephen Adley Girgis and um, was in a show directed by John Patrick Shanley. And these were all, you know, in the name of performance art and um, creating my own work. And along with that, you comes the um, it's necessary for for me to have the funding to be able to produce my own work. Um, and so I did have a day job and what I loved about, I was running a fashion showroom for a PR company. And what I loved about that job was the incredible flexibility they, they gave me and, um, got to work in the fashion world for four years. But I got to a point where I realized, you know, I really truly want to take my art to the next level. And I want to start getting hired in, you know, as a choreographer, as a writer. Um, how do I do that? I, tr I clearly need to have, um, like, a good business plan. Mm -hmm. And so what I decided was I should start this company um, and use that as my, as a test to see if I could really do this. And so love and water designs was this um, company where I, uh, it was a platform um, where artists from all over the world could submit designs inspired by different charities um, people would vote on the designs they liked the best, and then we would print the ones that won, and the artists and the charities would both get a portion of the profits. So I kind of really like took that and ran with it um, and left my day job to do so. And so that was my very first company. That's, that's wonderful. While you were starting this company, were there, were there books you were reading that helped you um, create it and launch it, or were there, were there mentors that you worked with? How did that process work? Well, yeah, I mean, so basically to prepare for the launch of this company, I was um, doing a lot of, like, online market research so on how to, how to market online, and I was um, talking to a lot of other business owners, and um, one book I read during that time, which was extremely helpful, was Rework, um, I have to remember who wrote that book, um, but it was ex it was just instrumental in helping me sort of focus and get organized, and it really gave me the confidence to keep on going because it, it was like these guys were so good at what they did and really talked about streamlining and staying true to what you want to do and stripping away everything else that could possibly be a shiny object or be in your way of you know, achieving that goal. It's so easy, especially as a business owner, to get caught up on a lot of um, details that probably don't matter and, and are oftentimes just, a, you know, a distraction from what you're actually trying to do. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. How long did you run that company for? So that company um, was, as I said, the very first, it was my first attempt. And um, I really kind of went all the way with it. The thing that happened, though, was that my marketing plan um, wasn't working. Um, I, I, I wasn't getting results, um, and I wasn't um, bringing in the amount of sales I needed to keep it going for the amount of, like, capital I had. So um, I had put it on. I had to close the doors within the first year. So it lasted just about a year. Um, but as a result... I realized, you know, there was really something missing in what I was doing. And right around that time, um, I, I wanted I was looking for a mentor. I was looking for um, a business owner who I felt, you know, could really teach me what I needed to know at that point. And luckily, um, that mentor found me. I, I was introduced to a man named Roger Webster, who owned a really successful um, PR company in the city. And he represented mostly all, like most all high end charities in New York City. Um, and he wanted me to create online, um, like social media campaigns for the events that they were throwing mm -hmm. for like the American Cancer Society, Central Park Conservancy, Fun for Park Avenue, like these really high end charities. And I was really excited, but I, I told him, point blank I said I don't know if I'm the right person for you because here's what just happened with my company and you know I'd, I'd love some guidance but I don't know and he said listen I have all the faith that you can do this let's just sit down